Yo, what's going on guys? Arik Seal. Welcome back to another video for Woe Long. And today, I want to talk about 11 things that I have learned having now played the game. I was fortunate enough to go hands-on with a demo build, and in that time I got to run through the start of the game, test out some of the different abilities, the combat, the mechanics, fight a boss, and basically get a feel for what the game has to offer and how it will play. Obviously, in the full game, there will be plenty more to explore, but already from my early exposure to the game, there is definitely a lot that I have encountered. So, if you guys do enjoy this, a like would be super appreciated. Comment down below. Let me know what you guys think of this game from what you've seen so far are you interested does this seem like the sort of thing that you will play and of course if it is make sure you stay tuned on the channel but to begin with in at number one first things first you can create your character which is hella awesome this game has a pretty in-depth character creator for any of you guys that played neo 2 you can expect similar sorts of things you have the ability to customize you know gender your face type there's plenty of sliders for different sort of shapes nose eyes ears all that good stuff you have scars you have hairstyles you have facial hair which i'm always super happy about the beard selection is relatively good not necessarily the most magnificent of beards but there are still a good selection of beards and on top of that you have things like scars tattoos other sort of things you can put on your face basically character creation is relatively in depth However, moving on from there, we then have the five phases. This is, for want of a better comparison, kind of like your starting classes. If you guys recently played something like Elden Ring, it would be like picking, say, one of the starting classes. This is not something you are locked into, but it will determine your beginning game stat distribution. So whether you are much more sort of offense focused, defense focused, whether you are more support, things like that, there are basically five phases to pick from. They will, of course, also start you off with different armor and equip you with different wizardry skills, all of which can be swapped out later. The five phases are the fire phase, which comes with Juchair, the divine beast. This excels in attack. You have the earth phase, which has the divine beast Chi Lin. This excels in defense. The wood phase uses the divine beast Qin Long, and that excels in support and recovery. The metal phase uses Bai Hu, the divine beast, and excels in debuffing enemies. And the water phase uses Shang Wu, who excels in stealth. So those are the ones you start with, but again, keep in mind, once you have started, you can change all those things, much like in Neo 2, where you can of course switch out your Guardian Spirit. You can also switch out your Divine Beast and your Wizardry skills, so just see these as your starting classes. Moving on from there, we have equipment. There's quite a few different things to use in this game. You can equip two different melee weapons, which of course you can swap on the fly. In fact, there's actually a built-in sort of combo counter mechanic, which will have you swapping weapons when you sort of successfully deflect an enemy. But you can equip two melee weapons. I'm sure the roster of weapons will increase in the full game. But in the demo, I got to test out swords, short swords, curved swords, twin blades, pole arms, and a few others. You can also equip two ranged weapons, and you then have a range of armor to choose from, helmets, chest, legs and arms and of course these all do come with differing weights so once again you do need to factor in if you go super heavy you will not be as mobile as if you choose light armor. Again you guys should be pretty familiar with that if you've played these kinds of games before. There's also an accessory slot but in the demo I wasn't able to test this out so I'll have to wait and see what exactly those are for. Now when it comes to combat, normal and spirit attacks. Normal attacks are fast and these will increase spirit when you land them. At the bottom of the screen you have a spirit meter and basically when you perform certain attacks it will consume spirit and this can then dip it into the negative side which of course is orange. Meanwhile if you perform attacks and you don't perform spirit consuming attacks you can then push yourself into the positive, the sort of high spirit meter and that's blue. Spirit attacks themselves are slower but they do deal much more damage. They also deal more spirit damage to the enemy and of course if you reduce the enemy's spirit gauge it can put them into a dangerous position. So of course in combat you're basically in this position whereby you're trying to manage this gauge because keep in mind you don't necessarily have a conventional meter like a magic meter whereby when it's empty you simply can't perform moves. You can basically perform spirit moves even if you are in the negative section but doing so will push you further down and of course if your spirit gauge gets too low then you can't use your moves and it puts you into basically like a staggered state. So you do need to be careful with this, there is the interesting trade-off. But it's also worth noting, conversely, when you're in high spirit, you can actually consume more of that high spirit to increase your damage. So basically, don't just spam moves just because you can. Moving on from there, we then have martial arts. Martial arts are attached to weapons. Weapons have special martial arts, kind of like if you guys played Elden Ring recently, you can sort of liken these to Ashes of War, not necessarily always as flashy, but basically these are special skills that are specific to the weapons that you have equipped. Rarer weapons will actually have two different martial arts, and once again, you can perform these by consuming spirit. However, you're unable to do these if your spirit decreases to the lower limit. So again, you need to weave these in sensibly. 
Additionally, one thing that is really important in this game is parry or deflect, which again is, uh, if you guys have seen my coverage of these kinds of games in the past, you'll know parrying is not my strong suit, but in this game you're going to want to learn. Deflect is very important. Timing it right will of course allow you to redirect enemy attacks, and this in turn will also lower their spirits. Plus, it'll increase your spirit. So, deflecting and parrying is at the core of this game. Enemies are also very aggressive and will block quite a bit, so definitely learning to parry some of their incoming attacks is really important, especially when it comes to their unblockable moves, which are of course depicted by the uh, red sort of glowing orb in their center. These ones cannot be blocked, so in order to deal with these, you either need to evade out the way, or ideally, you want to deflect them, so you can then follow up with a more powerful counter attack. So parrying is definitely very, very important. In addition to this, we have wizardry spells. So this game has quite a lot of layers. You have normal and spirit attacks, you have martial arts, and you also have wizardry spells. As mentioned at the beginning of the game, when you pick your different phases, not only does this determine the divine beast that you use, but it also determines the wizardry skills that you start with. Again, these can be equipped and changed however you please, but these fall into different categories based on the five phases. You can cast these mythic techniques. They again consume spirit, and spells also have morale ranks. So some of these require higher morale to use, of course morale is something you will build as you progress throughout the game. And much like martial arts, you also can't use these if your spirit is too low. But these range from things like buffing your weapon, projectile attacks, support focus skills, and even defensive focus skills. They're all very useful and of course unique to the five phases. In addition to this, you have summons and resonation. Summons, again, like I mentioned at the beginning of the game, are the five divine beasts that are linked to the five phases. Some of them are more defensive, some of them are more offensive, and some are more support. As you work your way throughout the stages and you defeat enemies, your summon meter will fill up. And then when you perform this, you can basically summon them and bring them in for a quick sort of assist style attack. Depending on the behavior, they'll stick around for a little while, not too long, so they're definitely not overpowered, but they do sometimes give you some nice bonus attacks, especially if you're fighting bigger, more boss-like enemies. However, alternatively, if you don't necessarily want to summon the Divine Beast, you can also use Resonation, where you basically use their power to power up yourself and your allies, which can then give you effects that are related to that type of Divine Beast. Next up on the list, we have Battle Flags. Battle Flags are basically your bonfires in this game. If you guys have played games like Neo before, like Sekiro, Dark Souls, Bloodborne, anything like that, you will know the typical formula around these games involves going around, defeating enemies, working your way to the quote unquote bonfire, which is a place that acts not only as a checkpoint, but also as a means to level up. And of course, if you die before then, you then typically return to that location. In this game, Battle Flags are basically your bonfires, so you wanna look out for these as you're working your way around the stage if you want to unlock more checkpoints. But on that topic, what happens when you die? Because of course, that is always a core focus in games like these. Well, this time around, while it does of course share similarities with other Soulsborne style titles, it is also very unique. See, when you die in this game, you lose morale points. Not all of them, but the number does go down. The morale is of course the number you'll see above your spirit gauge. In addition to this, you'll also lose half of the genuine chi, which of course is like souls in this game. This is the currency you use to level up. Additionally, when you die, the morale of the enemy that killed you also increases. So in order to regain your quote unquote lost souls, but in this game, lost morale and genuine chi, you need to defeat the enemy that killed you. Now it is worth noting, because that does sound pretty brutal, if it is a trash mob, i.e. just like a random enemy roaming around the stage, you just need to defeat that enemy. Meanwhile, if it's a boss, you just need to re-encounter that boss. So you don't have to defeat the boss to get it back, because that would be pretty grueling, especially if you're fighting a tough boss. But basically, that's how it happens. So if you die to someone, they get a morale boost, you lose the morale, you have to go back, defeat them to basically regain your honor. It is really, really cool, and it is a nice twist on a sort of more traditional system. So then finally, the last thing is, what exactly is morale? Well, morale affects your strength in battle. The same goes for your enemies. So of course, as you're progressing throughout the stages, you are killing some enemies, defeating things, your morale will increase. And again, as mentioned, when you die, it can decrease. However, it is worth noting that as you find more flags around the stages, these can increase what is known as your fortitude rank. And your fortitude rank is basically like a buffer, like a hard lock, whereby your morale will not drop below that point. So it definitely serves to go around finding the flags because they can basically act as like a blocker to stop your morale going too low. Likewise, enemies that have higher morale than you will naturally be tougher, so you can also use this to gauge whether it will be a tough fight or not. But anyway, that for the time being is pretty much it. Those are 11 things that I learned by playing Wolong, the demo. I've had a bunch of fun playing it so far and I'm definitely very excited for the full game. If you guys have any more questions, by all means let me know in the comments down below. If you guys have missed some of our recent videos, you can check out one of these ones and keep it locked for plenty more.